So in this video, you're going to understand how to create a basic parametric table family. So for that, we have to go on the new, then we're going to here Imperial. You can choose according to you. I'll choose this Imperial. And basically there are so many ways to create this uh, family. So first of all, uh, you can also use a casework family template. You can also use a floor based family template, or you can also use a generic model simple template as well so it's up to you suppose you wanted to create from scratch and you just you can actually later on you can categorize it uh, if it is a what type of uh, furniture it is you can actually set that later as well so suppose we want to just create from the scratch so we can actually use this one generic model so just open this one Okay, so right now you can see that. Let me close out the views. You can see that here we have uh, two reference plane actually. So first one is actually name showing here as a central left or right, and this one is showing center front and back. So basically this is the front and this is a left and right. So the thing is, now we need to create some certain reference plane. So press RP on the keyboard. Just create a few reference plane. And I'll just mirror it to the side from the center. And I'll create reference plane here as well. I'll just move it to the side, this one as well, like this. So first of all, let me change this project unit by pressing UN on the keyboard to this millimeters. It's always best to work on millimeters for your precision. Okay, so let's set this to 20. That's fine. And now let's make it parametric. So basically first what we did, we created reference plane because we need to control the parameters through that. So now press DI give a dimension like this one first one will goes to eq just create a dimension and press this eq so this both will move equally from the center do the same thing for this side as well and eq now give a dimension like uh, width or depth according to you and this will become a length so now we just give its dimension so i'll select this dimension here first i'll go here in the label and create a new parameter called length Okay, and basically it's up to you. If you want to uh, change any group, you can actually change the group as well from here. So basically group means which you see in the edit type, which group it will um, appear. So you can actually change it from here. I'll explain you this one later. So let's click OK. Now you can see that the length is here. So now let's set this as a, maybe a width or depth. It's up to you. Click OK. So now this both reference plane, uh, both side actually become a parametric. Now if I change this to maybe one meter, press one M, that converts to one meet, 1000 millimeters. I'll press this to uh, three meter, just for understanding. So basically you can see that it's actually moving far away behind because it increases. So right now is everything is working perfect. So I'll set this to one meter as well. So I can see that it's back in the same position. Now we just created a reference plane. Now let's go on the front side. So we need to set its height as well. So first of all, press RP. So give a reference plane for the height. I'll just create a reference plane like this. I'll press DI. I'll just give a dimension. And I'll just give this one as a height. Just name it at the height. That's it. Now you can actually control the height as well. If I press like a one meter, it'll go one meter. Just like this, it's working perfect. Now, what we have to do is we need to have a thickness as well. So what we can do is press RP again. So for the thickness, actually, I want to make it uh, maybe a 10 mm like that. So I'll just click this and use this temporary one. I'll just give 10. I think we can increase to 20. That's fine. Yeah, 20 is good. Okay, so now let's check here. So we have the length and the width parametric, and this one is actually uh, the height, and I want to give a dimension here. Sorry, from the top to the bottom one, this will become a thickness to it. So basically I can set a new parameter that is called uh, table thickness like this, and click OK. Now let's try to check it again. So it's always recommended to check each and everything whenever you want to create a family. So you can see that it's working perfect. So now it's good. 
Now, basically, we need to create extrusion. We need to work on extrusion. So let's go back to the reference level here on this floor plan and let's uh, minimize this one. We get confused to it. Okay. So now the thing is, you have to go and create this extrusion. Okay. So you have to go in this extrusion, solid extrusion. Then you can use the rectangle tool or either you can use the pick line tool as well. So I'll use the rectangle tool. It's quite easy. Just go here and select like this. And you'll find this lock option showing. So you have to lock it because this extrusion is going to lock to this reference line. This extrusion is going to lock in this reference line. So, so on everywhere. So it should be locked. Now I have to go in the front before finishing this. Now you have to finish this like this. And now what you do is press AL. Just select this top of the reference line. So select it and lock it. And then select it and lock it. Now you have the the top of the table is now extrusion is created. Now let's go back to here. Now the thing is we want to have a leg as well for it. So for that actually I'll create a new reference plane for inside. I'll just create like this both sides and I'll try to uh, determine it's like uh, maybe a hundred and this one also I'll give it offset like in a hundred. Sorry 100. So like this and now I'll create this mirror so it will equally you know, divide on the outside. So another thing is actually I wanted to have a fixed to its position, the lag position. So what we can do is I press DI, I'll select it like this and I lock it. So you can actually lock its position like this, same way here, like this, same way to this one, like this and lock it. So now all the four, the lag position is actually locked in this place. So even if I, I basically change the length uh, if I try to change the length like uh, 600 uh, and the width will be 800 so you can see that the difference is uh, this for the lag is now it's locked in this position and the lag which you're going to create it's going to be in the same place so let's go back control Z okay so now the thing is we want to create a lag so first of all let's go on this option called create and basically we are going to use extrusion only so it's quite simple easy to use click on extrusion we want to have a circular one so we can use this circle and then you have to just uh, click on this uh, mid middle point of it so basically the intersection of this two reference plane so click like this and suppose you have uh, 30 or 40 maybe 30 is good like this now, before finishing this extrusion, select that extrusion which you just created and basically you have to find this one center mark visible. You have to check this box. Why this is important? Because when I click this one here, the center mark is now visible. It's kind of a crosshair actually, you just see. Um, basically, it will help you to lock the vertical and horizontal uh, the segment actually in, in the same place and it will, when you're going to change the width and high, uh, sorry, the width and the length, this will be the fix into that position because this reference plane is locked to its place to the 100. That's the reason why we're using this. Press AL and just select like this and you'll find it. So vertical, horizontal is locked. So now let's select it, mirror it to the other side. Select both of it, mirror it to the other side. Now press AL again. You have to lock it each and every one because we change its position by using the mirroring. So we have to lock it back. So now all the four, this lag extrusion is now created. Uh, let's uh, go here in the front and let's finish this by using this. So now we can actually adjust till here and we can lock it and for the downside if you wanted to actually create some uh, paddings or something you can actually create that as well i explained you so let's uh, first lock it here and let's check on 3d hearts look like so you can see uh, it's look really nice here so we can see on the shade as well looks pretty cool and everything is correct so now if i try to change its uh, um, uh, its height and the length as well and let's change its uh, this width as well you can see that it's perfectly working. So let's set back to one meter, one meter, and uh, one meter. It's pretty fine. And I set this to table thickness to the bottom side. So we can actually change the table thickness to 3D and apply. You can see everything is now changed.
you can see here the table thickness also working so that's the reason understanding the parametric the family creation is quite important when you want to create everything from the independent template because you're creating everything from the scratch so you have to follow all this uh, you know your own uh, you can also create your own family according to your understanding but this is the basic of it so now the thing is let's go on the 3d uh, we want to add some padding on the bottom side suppose you see something and maybe in a design so you can do that as well by using the sweep so how we can do that let's go in the create and let's go here in the sweep pick this part you'll find this option and here because this sweep is attached to this lag so that's why whenever the lag is moving this sweep is also going to move in that place so you don't need to worry for it let's go on the reference level you'll find it here let's finish it and let's go uh, here in the edit profile so basically we need to go on left or right let's go here on the left side and simply we just create a, a simple kind of a padding support system i don't want too much thickness just wanted to have like a small box here five five that's fine and uh, finish it and you'll find it on 3d you have kind of a, a support system in the back used to see in the paddings okay so you can do that as well and let's try to join it with the, both of the element and it will look uh, finished in its place. So you can see that here when I turn this, it's now finished and it's connected. So this is how you can create the other padding as well. Let's create the other one as well. Use similar. Pick the part, finish it, edit profile. I'll just try to work in 3D. Uh, for me, it's quite comfortable. You can choose 2D as according to you. Five, five and five is there and uh, you can see it's not joined you're getting this line right you can see that right here so you can use this option called join the same element it's now fixed so that's a uh, using of that joint element and uh, let's create here as well quickly as well click here edit profile five 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 Working 3D environment need a little bit of experience, but it's always recommended to work in the 3D environment. That's really gonna help you a lot uh, while understanding in uh, any of BIM projects. And uh, let's try to create one more sweep here quickly. And let's create another one, this profile. Oops, sorry, I think it's 10. We need to get a five. You'll see this guideline is showing it's if it is moving in the perfect axis. So you can set that as well. Let's try to join it. Yeah, perfect. Now, the thing is, basically, we have created the parametric table. Now it's everything is working perfect. Now the thing is, we want to create the material parameter as well. So how we can do that? Suppose this lag is actually made with a different material. So how we can do, we can select this lag select this uh, as well as, as it is a part of it or either you can simply uh, selecting like this as well by holding shift uh, sorry the control key so I'll select multiple element by shift key you can see the minus sign is showing on the cursor it means that it will get it selected so if you want to select press control and select the element you want and drag it and now I'll just go here in the material category you'll find it is showing associate family parameters so I'll create a click that new uh, that's called uh, lag material just like this and it will be on the group and uh, the group material and that's a lag it's fine now this one has become a table so i'll just simply create a tabletop material like this Click OK. Now it's assigned to that. So now let's open a few, uh, like a, one of the free project here. Let's open architecture. OK, so let's load this into the project. And let's see how it's working. So we can see that it's working perfect. And let's go on the 3D. Let's go on the shaded. Now we can see that our table is working really perfect. So I was talking about here in here, the edit type, if you go here, You'll find these are the groups which I was talking about. So basically in the material and finishes, the group was uh, leg material like this. So we can set this from here as well. 
So this one has a good finish. I'll just want to have it. So you can see that the material is also working perfect. And also we can uh, change its shape. If I try to select and change the shape, uh, the height is like a four feet right now that this actually got changed. So no issues. I'll try to just check it. So apply working perfect it's fully parametric so now the thing is one one more thing is left actually which you see here in if you select the door you'll find these are the types of door but here if i select it we don't have any types we just have family one showing so how we can turn that as well so it's quite simple you just go back to the family template we just created go to this uh, family type and then whatever the dimension you can add just add it here first and click this one new type so this will become 1000 by 1000 just like this click ok now you have to change it suppose this is 800 by um, 800 and this will become 800 maybe this one is 1000 that's fine we just wanted to actually categorize through height and width so 800 by 800 uh, like that it's fine and uh, just click apply just do it and uh, this will become a type 2 that we can actually uh, simply do it like this 800 by 800 that's fine so it will be easy to identify and this one also i want to change it so basically this one become 1000 this one become 1000 back i want to change the rename it so i'll just try it type one type one that's fine okay let's apply on this one click ok and basically now we can actually uh, get the two types of here you can see that right it's changing a slice round I click OK now just load it back to the, this project and overwrite the existing so now the thing is I hope that it will be the material I think the material will be there yeah it's fine so you can see that it's now showing here you can see it's working perfect by selecting that and how we can delete that actually we can delete that go by going to the uh, this family here and as you remember that we use the generic model so that's why the category is here inside a generic model you'll find this family one just select this one and delete it that's it we don't have any more so we need to add our material as well of course again because that got deleted so let's add let a add material i mean like this one tabletop that's fine and this one is going to be aluminium just like this apply okay fine so if you got this and you can change it as well so this is now you can actually create your own simple parametric table in Rabbit.